Hi there, this is Tom Loud, and I want to teach you today about your identity in Christ. So I'm going to go over a few scriptures, and I'm going to give you some concepts that I'm hoping you will really consider and meditate on. The more you meditate on these things, the more you will understand what God wants to reveal to you about your identity. You see, your identity is vitally important for you to be able to walk in the power and the glory of God's Spirit. Those who know who they are are able to walk in all the fullness of what God has given them. Those who are insecure about who they are have a little opportunity to exercise faith because, um, you know, when you're not sure who you are, you're not sure what you're able to do. You're not sure what is yours and what is not yours. You're not sure what your rights are. You're not sure what your authority is. But when you know who you are in God, you know what you're capable of doing. You know what you're capable of, of being used for. And God wants to use you greatly. So my first question to you is, who do you think you are? That's a really loaded question. But the answer to that question will determine the power you walk in. You see, identity determines the power or authority you are able to exercise. Obviously, if you're the President of the United States, you have great power and authority because you have a position that comes with that type of power and authority. If you're a street sweeper, you don't have quite as much authority. Well, let me tell you this. If you're a son or a daughter of God, you have the authority that God has given all of his sons and daughters. And for you to understand that is vitally important for you to be able to walk in the power that God has given you. If you don't understand that, you will walk beneath your privilege. So I'm going to go over a few things. Um, it's very important to understand our role in this life. You see, imagine that you were an actor on stage and you didn't know what part you were playing. Well, that would be really confusing, wouldn't it? You need to know your part. You need to know who you're supposed to be. Well, sometimes we don't know our part. You see, when Christ saved us, we moved from being a sinner into being a saint. We moved from being a beggar to becoming a king's child. But if you're stuck in your own old role and you still think you're a beggar and still think you're a sinner, then you're going to act appropriately to that particular casting. But if you understand that you're a child of God, you will act differently. You will operate in authority and in power because you know who you are. So it's vitally important. So um, I'm going to go over a few things here that I've written down. You know, if you're a plumber that thinks you're a brain surgeon, and so you show up for work in the operating room, there's going to be some problems there. Because you're really not cut out for that thing. If you think you're a bird and you can fly and you stand on the edge of this Empire State Building and jump off, and really you're not a bird, you're going to have issues. <laughs> because you're acting in a way that's not appropriate to who you really are. There's a lot of Christians out there who are not acting appropriately to who they really are. We want to understand that. Um, if you're a policeman one day and you wake up and think that you're a police dog, your behavior is probably going to be a lot different than if you understand you're the policeman. You see, the dog is obedient to the policeman, but the dog can't put anybody under arrest. You have to know who you are to understand your authority. See, the devil doesn't want you to understand your authority because if you understand your authority, you become dangerous to the kingdom of darkness. So it's vitally important that we do understand our authority so that we can walk without fear and we can walk with boldness. For some people, when they were a child, they were told that they were stupid. They were told that they are wor were worthless. They were told that they'll never amount to anything. And that became, for many people, a self-fulfilling prophecy because someone that they trusted, their parent, cast them in a role. And the role was, you're stupid, you're worthless, you'll never amount to anything. And they have led the rest of their lives fulfilling the role that they believe was given to them. But if you tell a child that they can do it, that they're smart enough, that uh, they're gifted enough, you'd be surprised at what people can do. Well, the devil wants you to believe that you're a powerless child of God. And there's no such thing as a powerless child of God. There's only those that don't know the power that they have. Many will take the script of who the devil says they are or who the world says they are, and they'll study that script. And they'll live their life according to that script. But I want you to know this. When you accept God into your heart, when you accept Jesus Christ into your heart, 
your script changes, your part changes. That old part that you had, the part of the beggar, the part of the sinner, the part of the powerless person, that part has been written out of this new play, and you've been given the part of a king's child. You've been given the part of uh, someone with great authority, with great power. You've been given a part of someone with great honor and privilege. And you need to understand that the old part has been done away with. That uh, particular play is over, and now there's a new part for you. You need, you need to embrace that new part. If you don't embrace the new part, you're going to walk just like you always walked. And that is what we mean when we talk about the old man. You see, when you became a new creation in Christ Jesus, the Bible tells us we became a new creation, a new creature, or a new man. And the Bible also tells us that there's an old man, and the old man is the old us prior to Christ. And the old man has his old ways, and many of our memories harken back to the time we were the old man. And your memories sometimes will keep you in bondage because you think, well, I've always been that way, so I'm probably still that way. And that just shows that you don't understand the change that occurred when you accepted Christ. It's important that you understand the change that occurs when you ask Christ into your heart. You become a new creation. That word creation is a word that actually means creature. You're a whole different kind of being. You're a son of God. You're not just a fixed up version of the old you. You are a brand new person. A person created in Christ Jesus under good works. Proverbs 23, 7 tells us this, that as a man thinks in his own heart, so is he. If you think you're a chicken, you're probably going to walk around and, 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 you know, go buck, 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 buck. And you're, you're going to peck at seeds on the ground. You need to know who you really are. You're not a chicken. You're not a sinner either. You're a son of God. Sons of God act differently than sinners. Are you ready now to take on your new part, to embrace your new role? Well, let's go ahead and get into that. Let's cover a few facts about who you were and who you are. Fact number one, Psalms 51.5 says this. You're born in sin. That's a truth we can't deny. We can't deny who we were. We can just deny who we are now because uh, as far as this goes is we're not who we used to be. We're a different person. Yes, we were a sinner. There's no doubt about that. Psalms 51.5 says this. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. All men were born into the line of Adam, the fallen line. Adam sinned and we were born in sin because we were born children of Adam. That's why it's essential that we get born again. And when you get born again, you're not born in sin any longer because you're born of a new father. You see, if you were born the first time into sin, then the second time you're born, you're born according to your new father, which is in righteousness. The second time you're born, you're not born into sin. You're born into righteousness. That's something you need to understand. Romans 3.10 says this about the old you. As it is written, there is none righteous, not even one. All have sinned. Romans 3.23 says this, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We understand those things, but we've got to understand that those things are speaking of the old us, the old man, the person prior to Christ. These are not untruths. They're true for everyone who has not been regenerated, everyone who has not been born again. But when you've been born again, we can put these things behind us because we're living a new life. I'd like to read to you now Ephesians 2, 1 through 3. As for you, that's all of us, you were dead in your transgressions and sins. You notice it says we were. It's speaking to people who are now Christians. It says you were, but you're not any longer. In which you used to live. We used to live in them. When you followed the ways of this world and of the ruler of the kingdom of the air, the spirit who is now in work in those who are disobedient. So the spirit of the devil is still working in those that aren't following God. But that's not us, is it? Uh, verse 3, Ephesians 2, 3. All of us also lived among them at one time, gratifying the cravings of our flesh and following its desires and thoughts. Like the rest, we were by nature deserving wrath. We were, but we're not any longer. You were born into darkness. Not that there was no light, but actually what that darkness has to do with is we were blind. You see, you can be in a very, very bright room full of light, but if you're blind, it's darkness. Well, 
It's the Word of God that opens up our eyes. It's the Word of God that gives us sight. The blindness came because of the evil one. And here's what the Bible says in 2 Corinthians 4, 4. The God of this age, that's the devil, has blinded the minds of unbelievers. That's not you, if you're a believer. So that they cannot see the light of the gospel. That means the light is there, but they can't see it because they're blind. That displays the glory of Christ, who is the image of God. You were born into the kingdom of darkness. And all the rights of those that are born in the kingdom of darkness... That's all you had, and guess what? They don't have any rights. But you have now been born into the kingdom of light, and you have rights. You have rights through Christ Jesus, your Lord. It is true that when you were born the first time, you were born a slave to sin. I said, war says this. Jesus replied, Very truly, I tell you, everyone who sins is a slave to sin. That's the part or the role you are cast in at birth. And if you don't understand about the new birth, that everything's changed, then you're going to still live in that role. You're going to say, I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. You know, people say, I'm a sinner saved by grace. Well, you know what? That's kind of contradictory right there. Because if you're saved, you're not a sinner anymore. But the Bible says we're saints of God. We were in bondage to sin, but the Bible tells us that the Son has set us free. We're no longer in bondage to sin. We were born in sin, but the Bible tells us that we were born again under righteousness. We have to understand our new identity. It's vital to walk in the power of God and to also walk in intimacy with God. You know, if you feel that there's something between you and God, if there's a sin that's between you and God, if there's a barrier between you and God, you can't feel the closeness. You cannot feel that unity that you should feel as a son of God. The problem for many people is they haven't realized that the old role has been done away with and they have a brand new role. Because of Jesus' magnificent act of sacrifice for us, He has made a new way for us. He's made a new life for us. He paid off our debt, our debt of sin. He paid that off with His blood. And since He paid it off, that means that the penalty of it has also been excused because it's been satisfied. It's been paid off. And because of that, we are now free people. We are now people that walk in the kingdom of light. We're no longer slaves, but we're free people. If you don't understand that you're free, you're going to live like a slave. Now, there's an old story that I've told before about how elephants were used in Thailand years ago to harvest the teak lumber from the jungles. And what they would do with the elephant is uh, um, they used them like a bulldozer. They used them like a forklift. They're very powerful animals. They could use them to take the trees down and carry them out of the jungles. But uh, what would happen if they needed another elephant? Well, sometimes they would capture a, uh, an elephant that was in the wild. And to tame that elephant, they figured out a way to do that that was quite effective. They would chain, they would capture one of these elephants, and these elephants would not be uh, very voluntarily helping. They would be trying to escape, of course. And so what they would do is they would chain the rear leg of the elephant to a tree. And the elephant would yank on that with all his effort trying to yank that tree down, but the tree would just bend. And after a while, it would cause his ankle to be very sore from all the yanking. So he would yank a little less hard, a little less vigorously. And after a long enough period of time, he just looked down at his leg and say, what's the use? I give up. I've still got the chain on me. Well, that's what's happened to many people. As you see, uh, we've been chained in sin, and we fought it all our lives before Christ, and we found out that all we did was fail. That's all we did. But here's what they would do with those elephants once they stopped tugging on the tree. They would disconnect the chain from the tree, and the elephant would drag the chain around. It would still be around his ankle, but not, against the, not, not around the tree. And so the elephant would look down, see the chain on his ankle, and say, what's the use of trying to run? I'm still chained. That's what's happened to many of us. Christ has set us free, and we think we're still chained up, so what's the use in struggling? We just have to give up. The devil wants you not to know that you're free, because if you're free, you're dangerous to his kingdom. He wants you not to know that. You need to know who you are and what you have in Christ. You need to learn your new identity. Your identity will determine your authority. It will determine the life that you live now. 
I want to read to you a scripture in Romans 6, 17 through 19. It says this, But thanks be to God that though you used to be slaves to sin, do you know it says you used to? You have come to obey from your heart the pattern of teaching that has now claimed your allegiance. You see, when we be, get born again, uh, we read the Word of God, and it tells us who we are, and it tells us how we should behave, and we begin to have our allegiance to what that says, and we just give up the old way of life. Romans 6, 18, You have been set free from sin and become slaves to righteousness. You're righteous. You can't help yourself. You're a slave to righteousness. Isn't that an interesting term, a slave to righteousness? What it means is that you cannot help what you have now become. You were a slave to sin because you were born in sin, but now you've been born into righteousness and you cannot help what you are. You're righteous, so just receive that. Romans 6, 19. I am using an example from everyday life because of your human limitations. This is your human limitation, your natural mind. Just as you used to offer yourselves as slaves to impurity and to ever-increasing wickedness, so now offer yourselves as slaves to righteousness, leading to holiness. You were born dead with a sin nature the first time. But that man's dead. You see, that man, the old us, was crucified on the cross with Christ. The old us that was buried in baptism with Christ. There's a new us, and the old us is dead. Some people are living the life of the old man, and no one has told them that their role has changed. It reminds me of prisoners of war during World War II. What happened? They had POW camps, and many people were locked up in those camps. And uh, they had Nazi um, you know, guards all around the duration of the war. Did. And what happened, though, is that the day that the war ended and the, the Germans surrendered, the people in the camps were just simply abandoned. The, the Nazis just left the camps, but they left them all inside the camp, still chained up, still locked up. And the, the, the guards just left. And the people were wondering what's going on. So when the Americans and the Allies came to release them from their prison, they still thought they were prisoners. They didn't understand. Somebody had to tell them, hey, here's the news. The war's over. You're free. They didn't know they were free. Sometimes for weeks they had no idea they were free. Well, the devil doesn't want you to know you're set free. He doesn't want you to get the good news that now you're free. He doesn't want you to understand you're no longer a prisoner and you don't have to obey him any longer. I want to read Romans 6, 1 through 7 now. What shall we say then? Shall we go on sinning so that grace may increase? By no means. We are those who have died to sin. How can we live to it any longer? Or don't you know? Don't you know? It's saying... Have you gotten the understanding of this, Jen? That all of us who were baptized into Christ were baptized into his death. We were therefore buried with him through baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may have a new life. For if we have been united with him in death like his, we will certainly also be united with him in a resurrection like his. For we know... You remember that earlier verse said, don't you know? This one says, for we know that our old self, the old man, the sinner, was crucified with him so that the body ruled by sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin, because anyone who has died has been set free from sin. You are a prisoner. I want you to know the good news, you've been set free. You're no longer a prisoner. When you accepted Christ, you, that old man died. The one that was the slave, he died. And there's a new man resurrected in his place. You know what the problem is? Most people are living their whole lives in their old identity. Most Christians are living their lives out of their old identity. And that's why they're living beneath their privilege. And that's why they're living powerless lives. And that's why they still let the devil push them around. You don't need to do that. You're a son of God and you're a daughter of God and you have all the power that Christ has given you to use. And it's over all the power that the devil has or that the devil and all his angels collected together have. You have had all that power put under your feet 
and you stand in Christ complete. When you were born again, you were given a new identity. This time you were not born a slave, but you were born a son of God. You were born the child of a king. You're no longer a slave without rights, but you're a son who has an inheritance. You're a child of God and you've been given power and authority and dominion over all the power of the wicked one. He's been put under your feet. You're no longer blind. You see with both eyes wide open now because Christ has given you sight. The adversary is no longer hidden to you because your eyes are open. You see, when your eyes were blinded, you couldn't see his tricks, but now you can. You're in Christ. He used to tell you what to do, and you had to obey everything because you were his slave, but that's no longer the case. Now we're set free and we're sons of God. Sickness has to obey you now. Do you realize that? Demons have to obey you now. Do you realize that? Why? Because you're a son of God. Did you notice when Jesus walked the face of the earth, sickness obeyed him. Nobody argued. No sickness said, I'm not going. It all went. Demons obeyed him. There was no argument there. Uh, the very best they could do was make a request like those demons that were in that man amongst the tombs. And they said, can you at least cast us out into swine? But they couldn't stop Jesus from casting them out. Well, Jesus gave us the same authority he had. He says, as I am, so are you in this world. He's given us the same power and the same authority. And we have that. That's part of our new identity. Some that goes think along this is my true story. identity, but it's not. Some think my true identity is found in here, but it's not. My true identity is found in here. The Word of God.